Now that we know our value of e, or at least many digits of it, though not nearly an infinite number of them, we can see how those numbers we had on our table, introducing us to the idea of continuously compounded interest, definitely do approach this value. They were getting closer and closer to it as we moved on the list, as n got bigger. And in fact, the formula for calculating continuously compounded interest does involve e. Here it is. So for continuously compounded interest, we have this formula. a equals p times e to the rt. As before, a stands for the total amount of money in the account after t years have passed. p is the principal amount invested in the account. And r is the annual interest rate. Remember, e is not a variable. It's that very special number we just discussed. What if we kept Grant's situation exactly the same as before? A principal of $20,000 and an annual interest rate of 4%. But this time, we let the interest compound continuously. How much money will he have after five years then? Don't forget to use our new equation and please round to two decimal places.